Hey guys, how's it going? It's uh, Kellen Goth um, recording from our parking garage because uh, the house is kind of a mess right now. We're we're moving, so um, so yeah, I, I'm recording down here in uh, our makeshift uh, recording booth. My uh, my lovely lovely car. So uh, fiddlesticks. That was. Um, that was a surprise we were holding on to for a while, no pun intended, surprise party. Um, and a couple of you have been uh, asking, by the way, thank you guys so, so much for all the compliments and all the support about it. I really read everyone and I really appreciate it. I try to respond to everyone, but it's... Uh, it's a bit, uh, it, it, there's a lot of them. So I'm, I'm sorry if, uh, if I'm not responding to yours, it, they, they go by really quick, but thank you guys so much. Um, so some people have been asking number one, yes, my throat is fine. Um, we practice, uh, VO safety in our, uh, our, our career. So, um, with riot games, uh, it was the the people over there the team is so incredible and so understanding of uh what the voice actors have to do so uh thank you Kalel and Kayla and um Alyssa and uh Jared and everybody there thank you so much for under being so understanding and um and making sure we're safe. Um, so people have been wondering how I do the voice. Um, it's a combination of a couple things. And what I'm about to do is not safe for everybody. I, I've practiced this for about 12 years and I've made sure that I place it in a place that doesn't hurt. If it feels like it hurts, that's a no-no. Your throat is so fragile and it's like a muscle, but it's a muscle that can break like that. Like, like John Mayer, for instance, he pushed it too far and he had to be on vocal rest for months and months. So uh, be very careful with this. Know your limits. If it hurts, stop and just practice another day. Um, time, you know, you have all the time in the world uh, and as practice makes perfect, so does patience. So um, the first part of it is, yes, as some people have guessed, it, it, part of it is breathing inward. Um, and a regular inward breathing voice, it's going to sound like this. It's not going to sound exactly like what fiddlesticks is. Uh, so what I've learned to do is put it uh, so that it's hard to explain, but put it in the upper right corner of my throat. And that activates a bit of a whistling undertone. Uh, it sounds like two voices are talking at once or the wind is talking or a rusty gate. Um, it'll take some time to find that. And then it'll take some time to make it safe. Uh, so don't, you know, don't try it. This will not happen in a day. Um, so a normal voice sounds like this going in. Um, but, uh, the, the breathing in voice, it sounds more like this. So yes, a, that will over time, it will make you a bit dry. And that's why it's important to hydrate constantly if you're going to be doing this and don't do it for any more than don't do it for any more than maybe a minute at a time with breaks in between because it can be vocally stressful but it it as long as it doesn't hurt and as long as you're pacing yourself it'll be fine um so there's that part of that that that's the biggest part of it um but I can't, you know, you can't do an entire, unless you have like the biggest lungs in the world, uh, doing an entire sentence like that isn't going to really work out. So um, what I do to alleviate that is in certain parts uh, for the breathing out, I, I will make that 
uh, talking as well. So say we're going to say uh, end of men, first of ten. Um, so if the first part is breathing in, then the the and the uh, second part of it is breathing out, then it would sound like end of men, first of ten. Um, how I uh, find that outward voice is it's a whisper. Um, you start, you know, with a, with a whisper, and then you find that place in the back of the throat where a stage whisper comes from. And then you, you find where your air is coming out, and then you push it a bit farther, and that's where that comes from. Uh, now, you won't get to that place either in a day. So please be patient with yourself and please make sure that nothing's hurting. Uh, drink tons of water and I think you can get to that point. Um, but do not. do. I cannot stress this enough. Do not do it if it hurts and do not do it to the point of exhaustion. That is no bueno. Um... Okay, so other than that, there's uh, little animal sounds in between. And I, I've found out how to do these animal noises partially because of my teachers like Bob Bergen and uh, Charlie Adler um, and uh, David Sobolov. They, they've sort of taught me some techniques for doing these animal noises. Um, but... Uh, I've done it mostly by listening to animals and mimicking how they sound. And a lot of it can be done inward. Like the pig squeal for the, that was me for, for the, uh, for the ultimate. Um, it's done by, um, going inward, um, and then cutting yourself off really quick. But you, first you got to find that. There and that's done by you know how you can go like uh, going outwards. Try it inwards and go uh, and and then keep keep um I would say keep strengthening that part. Find it and then keep strengthening it until you can make it sound like uh, and then you can sort of shape it and um for the pig squeal it's sort of like a low to high so it's like a um and uh for the horse whinny i did that the the horse um laugh uh this is for you jared the it's sort of uh it's like a chuckle interrupting yourself but it uses the breath mostly so it's like a so he, that's the first part of it. <laughs> Just try and find that place. Um, impossible for me to tell you exactly where it is because I don't have the literate skills to do so. But um, I found it. I believe in you. I believe you can. And again, if it hurts, stop. Uh, and practice another day. Um, I'm going to take another gulp of water because even the pros just... We need pit stops. Um, so there are other parts of it. There's wind blowing. I use both sides of my mouth. I sort of turn my tongue into like a uh thing. I, I sort of uh, shorten it in the width so that the my cheeks have a lot more air. And then... I use the same principles as a whistle, but uh, I let it, uh, I, my mouth is a bit wider and I let uh, the sides of my mouth carry the tone. So it's like a, so you can hear that when he's breathing. Um, let's see, what else was there? Um, oh, the, uh, there's sort of a chitter that you'll, you'll hear at times that's done by taking this corner of the mouth or, or this one, what, whatever you prefer. And you close the rest of your mouth, but you suck air through there. So at first it'll be like, but then as you close it more and more, think of a Ziploc baggie, as you close it more and more, it'll get 
tighter and uh, louder. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll show the transition. It's like... So that's the full transition. Now, instead of... Now, using that technique with the lips, instead of breathing in suck in. It's so hard to, but it's the difference between and like, like that. So uh, when you do that, it'll sound like if you can, uh, if you can get to that point, you just have to keep practicing with that. Um, I think that about covers it. I, I don't think there's any other part of him, just the the guttural stuff, and that's the same principle. You just have to find a place to... It, it's inward. You have to find a place to place it, and it's... Uh, End of men, first of kin. It, you just have to find that growl. It, you can find the outward growl, too, but the inward growl is what I use for a fiddle. Um, I think that's about it. Thank you guys so much again. Um, if this helps, I, I'm glad. Um, and I hope, I, I wish you all luck in uh, becoming voice actors and voice actresses as well, if that's your dream. Um, yeah. See you in your nightmares. <laughs> all right, bye guys.